today's install will be completed on a One Replicas SSQY. We have the hilt itself, the fully removable chassis, the NeoPixel connector, no holder is necessary as it will mount directly into the chassis, a ProfiBoard V2.2, a single tactile switch, the micro SD for the profi board, positive and negative terminals for the removable battery, which will go here, a switch to cut battery power to the board, a 24 millimeter speaker, two gauges of PTFE coated wire, the smaller being 30 AWG and the larger 22 AWG. The two strands are just examples and an 18650 lithium ion battery. As always, I will link a Google Doc with these components down in the description. Let's take a look at the hilt. The switch plunger unscrews and you can see how it functions. The pommel end unscrews from the main hilt body, which is one piece. and the pommel is vented for sound, as you can see. The other removable parts include the CoverTech knob and screw. The screw is flush inside the chassis. There are also two grub screws, one for blade retention and one for chassis retention. The chassis is separated along a print line, so I repaired it with toothpicks and epoxy. It's not going to be visible anyhow, so I wasn't concerned with getting a replacement. This worked just fine. This chassis will fit into the hilt from the emitter, but not from the pommel end without significant modifications, and that's fine for my purposes. The tactile switch fits snugly into the chassis, as does the speaker. However, the NeoPixel connector will take a bit of work to get the right fit. The profi board is a bit tight as well. The battery fits easily and should do well when under tension of the contacts. The contacts themselves snap into place, but will also need a small amount of adhesive to minimize movement. The kill switch is definitely too tight of a fit. And here I'm just testing the plunger and switch compatibility. which appears to be good. Before proceeding further, I'm going to grease these threads to prevent gulling, cross-threading, or squeaking. With that done, let's dial in the fit of this connector. I'll start by removing the excess material from the board left after printing. An X-Acto knife and some 150 grit sandpaper works well. then just a bit of material to be cleaned up in the chassis itself. And now the connector slides into the proper depth. I'm gently gripping three of the pins with smooth jaw pliers as it's a very snug fit. Now we'll clean up the board holding area in the chassis with limited material removal in specific places. And it snaps right in. I'm cleaning out quite a bit of excess material to get a good fit with the switch. and I could have forced it down further, but chose to lightly trim and sand the switch instead. 
Remove too much though and the switch will come apart, so this isn't the best option if you don't know the limit or if a busted switch will cause you heartache. This one's also a fairly tight fit. Using scotch Bright abrasives, I gently rough up and even out the printed surface of the chassis. This removal allows for smoother fitment into the hilt and makes the chassis ready for finishing. After cleaning with isopropyl alcohol, I use my go-to mahogany dye to spice it up a bit. After coating the chassis, I work off any dye remaining on the surface using a lightly wet paper towel. I'm going for a very gentle weathering on the hilt itself by slightly marring it with random tools. A small file or blade can be used to knock off the hard machined edges. And because I wanted more of a brushed rather than polished look, I used the abrasive pad again across the whole hilt. Once again cleaning with alcohol before strategically applying aluminum black. I then buffed those areas back out. Before I start installing electronics, I'll mention two things that are super helpful in minimizing cursing during installation. The first is to have your specific wiring diagram drawn out and in front of you at all times. The second is testing your electronics before they go into the chassis. So that's what I'm doing now. This is a little contraption I threw together for safely testing removable battery setups. And always, always, always clean up your flux residue and any stray solder or wire before applying power. And all these components function like they should. So when I initially cut my wires, I like to rough them in. I gauge how far they need to run into the hilt, and I leave enough extra to trim off later. That way, I'm not trying to get the exact length without truly knowing what that is. Handy tip, never leave an SD card in while soldering. It can melt. And this is the final install. So everything needs to be at production quality, unlike my rough test setup. Notice those very shiny solder joints with insulation butted right up to them. No exposed wire strands or wire at all. Solder while in the chassis or solder, then place in the chassis, whatever you're comfortable with. And labeling wires never hurts, especially if they're all the same color. I sometimes use E6000 not only to secure things, but also to add a little electrical isolation as well, in cases where options like heat shrink are a pain to use. The trick is always not to overdo it. Another tip, switch legs solder easier if you bring your iron in from underneath them.
The connector needs a little E6000 to secure it, but again, don't go overboard on this kind of thing. Less is more. I've carefully removed insulation from my positive line to tie in my battery. I prefer this method in these situations to joining three wires. I'm shrinking the heat shrink with my iron to avoid melting the chassis with hot air. And now, with all the other components in place, I can solder them up to the board. At this point, it's just a matter of trimming, stripping, tinning, and soldering. If a joint isn't satisfactory, I redo it. And once again, cleaning up the aftermath of soldering is key. If you skip checking that your connections follow your diagram, if you skip attending to the neatness, if you skip cleaning up the flux, you're asking for headaches and magic smoke. But if you do all that and attend to the other necessities, you find satisfaction. If you like today's build, Leave me a like or a comment, and subscribe if you want to see what else I'm working on. If you need help with your Sabre build, or you want to see what others are doing, check the Facebook link down in the description. I hope you're all keeping well. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Y'all are awesome. See you next time.